In my previous video, we were looking at the long-term construction of the landfill. Um, this one will focus on the day-to-day -day operations, which we touched on before, but I'll try to go into a little more detail in this one. And as I tried to stress at the end of the last video, so many different things going on and being managed at the landfill at one time. So similar thing for operations, there's traffic, litter, odor, pest, noise, fires, mud, dust, all these things need to be managed and they're all regulated. Um, waste and placement is the core operation that I'm gonna focus on in my lecture here, um, but just know there's so many other things. In the picture here is um, an example of predatory bird control that's used for keeping birds off the landfill. Um, so there's all these little jobs to manage these other aspects, you know, mud, there's wheel washing and um, dust, they'll spray uh, sealant or water on the roads. There's all these little measures to manage these tasks um, to keep the landfill really orderly um, and keep the neighbors happy, happy basically. But I'll focus on waste and placement here because it's kind of the core landfill operation. Um, so I was just showing you Waterloo landfill in the uh, the previous video. Um, so this is a view of that new cell that's being, uh, or the thumbnail here is a video of the new cell being constructed. But I'll just invite you to to check out this video and there's some you can see some things that you can't see from the Google Maps in here, and this is kind of a replacement for our region of Waterloo landfill um, uh, tour that we normally do. Um, and then there's a second video that I'll share um, as well, which just shows the waste and placement process um, from the perspective of being in the cab itself, which is a kind of different perspective on it. Um, so you can appreciate what that job's actually like to do and looks like from the ground. So the waste and placement, um, this picture shows our tipping face. So again, you can see some birds going on in here. So um, those would are one of those things that you want to control on a daily basis. Um, you can see we've got some trucks bringing waste up to the tip face. So your site will have to be designed with an access road for vehicles to come in, get weighed, and then actually get to the tip face. Could be PCVs, could be SCVs. Um, once they deposit the material there, then the landfill um, operators are gonna move it around and compact it in place. So you can see uh, in the, the picture here, there's um, a dozer at the back, which is good for moving the waste around, and then a compactor, which is good for actually putting it on the tip face and then um, pushing it into place. Um, the tip face here you can see is on a bit of a slope. So it's normally a one to 10 or one to three kind of slope just to be able to compact it effectively. And there's different uh, theories about the best way to compact it and different for different materials and things like that. But you, you could be compacting up the hill, down the hill or across the hill. Um, just, just so you know, there's different philosophies out there. Um, in the video, you'll see him working downhill, uh, which is uh, preferred for compaction. Um, uphill, you can see a little bit better. Sometimes they switch what method they're doing based on, you know, if they're doing C and D waste, which is a little more stable versus um, municipal solid waste, which is lighter and rolls and blows and things like that. Um, but we don't have to get that detailed uh, for our course. We're getting into the weeds a little bit. Here's a compactor. Um, so the thing that's really striking about these is these um, uh, sheep's feet on the wheels. And these are used to punch the waste, to compact it and kind of knit it into the waste underneath. So you wanna have a homogenous compacted waste. You don't wanna have these layers of high and low conductivity, which will conduct water one way or the other. You want it to be um, really compacted, consolidated and as homogenous as possible. And that's what these compactor wheels help to do. Do. Now, every day after you're done placing the waste, you need to cover up the waste to help control um, for litter, blowing away, odor coming off the waste, pests getting into the waste, as well as um, fire, so preventing the oxygen um, or any ignition sources from getting into the waste. And the traditional way of doing that is by applying daily cover, which is about a 15 centimeter layer of soil. And that's what you can see in the picture here. So this white stuff is the exposed waste. And then you can see these tracks of where um, it's been covered up with your daily cover over time. Now daily cover using soil is a little bit inefficient because you end up filling your landfill with a lot of soil. 
Uh, if you think back to our landfill mining, I showed you the table of all the material that would come out of a mine landfill, uh, and it was half soil. So if you can avoid filling your landfill full of soil, then you can save your airspace and make some money and be a little more economical that way. So the alternatives to using soil are called alternative daily covers. So rather than spreading this 15 centimeter layer of soil over your waste at the end of the day, um, you can spread uh, alternative materials over. And there's two groups of materials under alternative daily cover. One is waste derived materials and then non waste derived materials. So waste derived materials are just specific wastes that you'd be landfilling anyway, um, but these ones are good for performing those functions of odor control, fire suppression um, and pest control. So more inert materials um, that are easily spread can make a nice continuous layer. Um, so these could be things like bottom ash from incinerators, which we'll talk about um, in one of our next chapters, uh, crushed glass, compost, yard waste, contaminated soil, uh, sludge from wastewater treatment, construction and demolition waste, so like um, you know, pieces of concrete and gravel and things like that. Auto wrecker finds, so this is all the stuff that is not metal that comes out of auto wreckers, so shredded up seats and stuff like that, um, and shredded tires. So all this stuff would be going into the landfill, but by separating it, um, maybe treating it by shredding it and things like that, it makes a good material to cover up the waste at the end of each day as well. So even though it is waste, um, it's covering up waste that's causing those problems, um, potentially of, of pests and fires and odor and all those things. Um, and the nice thing about waste drive material is you're probably getting um, paid to landfill anyway. So it's a good way to uh, make some revenue while performing that function of covering up your waste. Non-waste drive materials, on the other hand, um, they actually take up less room than the waste drive materials, um, but you need to buy them. So they're specifically made for covering the waste. We're not just finding a smart use for these waste materials. So there's a few types. Um, there's spray on products. Um, I'll show you a picture of them. Um, and they could be made of uh, wood or paper fiber. They could have ash in them or kil cement kiln dust. Um, and you just need special equipment to spray it on. So there's trucks that spray it as they drive back and forth, or there's guns that spray it kind of like a snowmaker. Um, there's also geosynthetics that are like big roll on tarps. Um, you cover it and then you roll it up at the end of the day. And again, you need special equipment to be able to handle these big uh, tarps. So here's some sprayers. There's the one with the truck on the left, um, the one with the gun on the right. And you can see, uh, well, you can't see the waste underneath them. So it is, it is a daily cover of that waste. And then here's uh, that tarp approach. There's two different ones. And uh, the one on the right here, you can see they they put some soil on top as ballast to help keep it from blowing away. 